Oh man, Cohan. It it's been about a month and a half since we've recorded one of these. Um, yeah, and I think you're going to be impressed. Really? Because I have been busy, and I've got quite the haul. I was counting them before we started the show, uh, and I'm going to talk about eleven figures. Dang, eleven. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking about a little more than 11. Uh, I'm going to be talking about close to 40, if that's okay with you. This could be another long episode, isn't it? It probably is. Welcome back to I Bought Toys Today, the show where two old friends enjoy the best part of the toy collecting hobby, telling each other what we bought. Uh, I bought a lot. Yeah. Settle in. Get a snack. Um, turn your phone on silent. You're going to want to enjoy this one because as I'm legally required to be, I am John. And I am Cohan legally. And... We've got a lot of news. We've got news. We've got a pile of news. Because uh, I bought toys. I bought toys as well. You bought the rest of toys. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I added to my collection, you bought the rest of toys from existence. Yeah. Um, we'll see how many were poor decisions. <laughs> I was going to say that none of mine were, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, can I jump right in and start us off? Yeah, please with, do. With, I'm just going to check uh, one off real quick um, because I got a real neat uh, addition to the collection bouncing off from last episode um, when we played a little game of whether or not to open a toy. Um, I got a cool figure in the mail recently uh, when I got the classified non-retro carded version of Yield Crimson Guard here. Um, and it was really nice to see this show up on my doorstop because I didn't order it. No, you didn't. So that's the best kind of toy. Uh, I got this as a birthday present from Cohan. Yeah. Aww. I knew I, I couldn't find the the classified card out in the wild. I found this one at a at a at a toy convention and I thought, well, he can at least unbox this one. Yeah. And uh, that's working out great uh because the retro carded one and the classified one are just a little different. Backpack is different colored. Face mask is different colored. Uh, pistol holster, different colored. I think the red is a slightly darker shade as well. I was going to say, I think that one's darker. The so, other one is, like you said, a little more cartoony. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm real happy that I'm going to unbox this one, as cool as it looks, especially because the box art makes it look like he's about to shoot a Cyclops blast. Look at that. Um, but... I, I think he's going to look real cool up there with the rest yeah. of the classifieds. I think that if I had opened the retro one, it would have been like one of those is kind of a little more saturated yeah. than the others. Mm-hmm. But this was, was a, a very cool birthday gift. Thank you, Cohan. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do, I don't want to do too many. Okay. In a row well, because me, you, start... you've got a bunch okay. and I, I want to give you as much time to, do your thing as you need. Well, let me start with a couple of quick hits. Um, I did go to uh, two toy conventions, Neotech and uh, Toy Hio. And at Toy Hio, these are not toys, but I have to show them anyway. I met the Michael Jordan of the toy collecting community. That's one Ma- Mr. Matt Cardona. We have the dumbest smiles on our faces. Very pleasant, very friendly to talk to. Nice guy. Had a great chat with him. Uh, there's Matt Cardona. 
And for other UW uh, or you wrestling fans, I met one uh, bad A, Mr. A, Daddy A, Billy Gunn. Look at that guy. I'm six foot three. And look at him. Look at him. And he's 10 years older than me. God, I am out of shape and he's jacked. So anyway, uh, I got to meet them, have really good conversations with the two of them. Very, very friendly. Um, so the, the quick hits we'll start off with uh, were a set of figures John got a while ago. And since then, I've, I've kind of coveted them. Didn't pull the trigger until I saw them. Started at Toy Hio. And um, I got this group, a little bit of the Guardians of the Galaxy. There's Adam Warlock, Star-Lord. I uh, almost called them Batista. <laughs> um, Drax Green and Rocket. Batista. Yeah, Green Batista. Um, really great prices. Just scoop them up at the price they were worth. And then today at a garage sale, I just happened to find uh, Yondu. And not, not, gar- not, not movie Yondu, but classic Yondu. Really another good price. I'm going to say that the most expensive toy I bought on here was no more than $40. And I have a haul. And the most expensive one would have been the first one I bought months ago. <clears throat> but I saw him on sale and scooped him up. Probably the Adam Warlock. About him. What's that? Probably the Adam Warlock. <laughs> yeah, probably that one. Um, but staying with the Marvel theme, and I've got you know, most of Cosmo going there, and I won't even show them when I get them. I'll just inform you. I did not find the entire collection, um, so I did order um, Mantis and Craglin. Is that his name, right? Yes. Yeah. I did order them to complete the set and to complete Cosmo the Wonder Dog. But I did find this fella. Again, a toy hio, good price. He would actually, he was with Adam Warlock. It was buy one for fifteen or two for twenty. This one was priced at twenty. So basically, ten bucks a pop. I got me a, I got me a saber tooth. That's good. Yeah, yeah. These were all in box too, by the way. Every figure I showed you, and I've, I've unboxed them. Wow. Um, so I, I scooped up saber tooth, and uh, I just love that that maniacal. That maniacal Sabretooth's face. And now I'm in a conundrum because do I have him fight Wolverine? Or do I recreate that first cover versus Iron Fist? Mm. <laughs> All right, calm down. Because I, right. like, my Sabretooth is right here. Yeah. Because he fell off the shelf. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, like, this is this is my Sabretooth. But when that one came out, I was like, I'm not going to grab that because it's like that's not the the look that like i love but the the thought that did cross my mind the whole time is like that's that's a saber tooth that you would very much like because that yeah, looks like it, the one that was fighting iron fist yeah well that's but but i think it's more akin yours because that's his first appearance look i believe yeah um but finally found this figure um wasn't really hunting him but then the price i cannot praise the vendors at Neotech so much because as I was telling John, I can't tell you how many times I walked up to a vendor, picked up a figure and they were like, Hey, are you looking at that figure? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, that's the one I want. And they would arbitrarily offer me a cost lower than what they had a priced at. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop passing them up, which is why I came home with so many different figures. But, uh, the, so this one, Hawkeye, are you, are, you, are you just going through my whole back row? I'm telling you. Wow. And again, the guy had him priced at 25 and he had a couple other figures on the table, which I already had. And I even said, that's the only one I'm kind of interested in. He's like, how about 15? Uh, okay. <laughs> I, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous what I was, the deals I was getting and not even asking him. And I'm not being trying to be facetious about this or, or, or make a joke about it or he's like, oh, look what I did. No, it was, these were just nice people saying, I think I just want to sell my toys and this guy is interested. So how about I just give it that much? I mean, John's Crimson Guard was the same way, but I've always wanted Jeremy Renner version of Hawkeye because I think he's great. And this will go right, great, right next to Kate Bishop. So I've got, do you have the Kate Bishop one? I do. Yeah. I had her, I got her last year sometime. So He's just going to look good next to her. He's very big. Right? 
pulling his pulling his arrows. Both of them be setting up to to aim. It, it, good stuff. Good stuff. So a little Marvel Hall there. Um, let's just run out the Marvel Hall. Which this is I found funny because I got this set. Here we go. Kid Force Collectible. Collectibles. Shout out Joe Kiskis. And I saw her at Toy Hyo and even at the the Neotech. They had a price for thirty, thirty five dollars to make. She just came out. So for twenty seven dollars, bam! There she is. Classic. Classic Jen Walters. Classic She Hulk. Right there. Ooh, she only comes with two sets of hands and a broken gun. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't need that. I don't think I'm going to unbox her anyway. Uh, she's one of those figures that, I mean, she's she's great looking. She's so classic, but I think she's I think she's going to go on the wall. So I don't, I'm not going to unbox her. So, uh, but that's a quick little quick little snapshot of my Marvel haul. I'm not sure how I feel about you not unboxing the she-hulk i get it but it, it is such a good looking figure it is um i might in the future but as of right now she's kind of just feeling to me a wall hugger hmm. let me move on this wall back here yeah so you, you do have plenty of she'll be in good company but okay so i've done eight <laughs> well, you've how done about... one can I, can I pick up where you left off? Please do. Oh, there goes my coaster. Okay. Um, well, I got a figure that is an upgrade of sorts. Um, and it's, it's your She-Hulk is going to be real familiar um, because I got uh, one of the Iron Mans, Iron Men, yeah, uh, yeah. from that same line. They, they put out like a fancier one, but this was the... This was the the Iron Man I was interested in um, because uh, it's an upgraded version of this Iron Man, and look at that look at that size difference. Yeah, uh, and this is the Iron Man uh, that I'd been using for like my group of Avengers, uh, and the group of Avengers that I have on the shelf are the Avengers from the Avengers arcade game. Like I have, I have just a, a real simple cap, a white vision, a Hawkeye on his air jet and Iron Man with the big thick boots, uh, because this is the version uh, that was in that video game. Um, and they made a better version of it. Um, so he, uh, that one did... what you got? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That one doesn't seem as, and again, maybe it's the packaging, maybe it's the lighting, doesn't seem as shiny as the one you have unboxed. I could be wrong. It's it's not. It doesn't have like the 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 gold uh, metallic sort of finish to it. Yeah. Um, it just has a more sort of yellow and red plastic looking thing. Um, okay. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I like one more than the other. Um, but I think he is going like this looks slightly out of proportion with the rest of the figures. Mm -hmm. Like he's kind of little. And you, I think you see it most in like the hands and the face. Um, but this guy will definitely be coming off the uh, card here. You know, and it's funny you say that because as I look at her, she looks much larger than the other three She Hulks I have. Oh, I mean, she's obviously bigger like muscular wise mm -hmm. the way she's posed i wonder if i straighten her out she might be and they all might be the same height but she definitely is 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 larger huskier is not the right word i mean more muscular you know like the one from the tv show is much is, is uh, much more live even the savage right rampaging she hulk i have is not as Bulky as she is, but I'm that, sorry. That that she hulking, that that she hulk is hulking. Um, yeah, like if you look at her in the package, like they bend her knees to mm -hmm. fit her in there. Yeah, um, like they don't, they they don't they don't make Iron Man squat down like, to fit <laughs> uh, in there. Yeah, and and between like straightening her legs out and that the hair, like that's a big figure. 
Yeah. Um, which is which is real good. So Iron Man's going right up on the shelf where this old one was, and, and he'll move on to the retirement home. Um, but I don't know if I'm taking this guy out of the box yet. Because I, I also got the Whiplash. Okay. Um, and and this, this beautiful glare monster, which is never not going to catch that. I love how his ponytail comes separate. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to try to defend myself. I love an obscure villain. I think that's been established. No. Yeah. That's not news. Um, I also like Avengers characters with stupid weapons uh, that have no business being used in like modern combat. Um, so a dude in a cape and a whip. Mwah. This guy's great. But, well, before I go on a, a, a little a little walk, what do you got, Callahan? Well, I was going to say, which reminds me of the garage sale where I bought Yondu today. Do you remember the, the first time we went to PowerCon mm -hmm. and I got those Power Man and Iron Fist figures? Yeah. They're not really good. No, they're, oh, they're so bad. Uh, the guy had a Black Knight figure. Was it the of, of that same? Oh, what the hell are they called? Um, so, like, I think I know the one you're talking about. Um, and this is going to bring the show to a screeching halt. Was it? Was it like uh, they have the word "gold" on the front? Yeah. Uh huh. How do you remember how much it was? Forty. I think I think it was forty. Um, I. I've seen that figure. I don't. I don't remember if it was PowerCon or not, uh, but I've seen that figure at shows for a hundred dollars. Do I'm going to go get it for you tomorrow? He's open tomorrow. I will <laughs> go back. I will go back and drop it. I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll, I'll shoot your picture before I buy it, and you can tell me yes or no. Forty's still a bit silly, um, but it's probably the best price I ever find for a. a that's not a great figure. Um, but Whiplash is. Okay. Um, I've been a fan of, of Whiplash since Marvel called him Blacklash. Um, because growing up, uh, I one of my favorite books was the first volume of the Guide to the Marvel Universe, which had all of their characters alphabetically. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had like A, B, and a little of C in the one I had. Um, so in B was a character named Blacklash, is this guy. Um, which is wild, because his last name is Scarlatti. So they didn't go with, with like, Scarlet something, which feels like a real marvel -y thing to do, especially, like, he's probably been around since the 70s or something. Um, so I've been fascinated by him uh, since... I think I, I had that thing when I was like six. Mm -hmm. um, so he was just a, a character that always fascinated me because in his, in his entry, there were all these pictures of him, like fighting Iron Man, fighting the Avengers. And I'm like, the, the, the guy has a whip and a man bag. Like, how does he stand up against foes such as Iron Man? Probably not well, but, um, I can't believe they made a new one. This this is up there with like when they made like a maggot or they made like a random, um, just, just like a figure that I can't believe they actually made a figure of. And I'm real happy to see. Plus they've made the whip and the, the whip is very good. And now that they have the whip, you know what that means, Cohan? No. They're one step closer to making a Sinyaka figure. Sinyaka. Yeah. I don't know who that is. You don't remember Sinyaka from the, the old episodes? He's the um, Magneto's acolyte that had a whip. No, I really don't. I may or may not have edited a picture of him in, so we'll see what happens. I may have, but I just... So, 
Whiplash, very good. And I got one more Marvel Legend. Okay. Um, and it's one that I, they finally made, and it completes one of my teams. So I'm very happy to have it. And I got a little Wolfsbane. You got a Wolfsbane. Okay, very good. Just, just got a little Wolfsbane. Yeah. Just got a little... Look at that. Yeah. Um, she's interesting. She uses uh, Polaris's torso. But they changed the the little X emblem um, on here. It is red and white. If that'll focus mm-hmm. again. On uh, Polaris is just red and behind it is yellow like the rest of it. Um, and it's she's the the last X Factor member I needed, so I, I don't really know where on the shelf she's going to fit at this point. Um, I'll make room somewhere. Yeah, okay. um, but I I think it's very cool to finally have the last member of that team. But this is. This is new for our show, Cohen. Um, I don't think she's a good figure. Uh, I have several of those. Um, our man, my fist, the gold ones right here. They're actually right there behind my shoulder. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's it's one thing if it was like you know it was made in '95 and Toy Biz was just like going crazy, but I just don't think she's very good. Um, it's not a great likeness. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I think of Wolfsbane. I don't necessarily think of her with Wolverine hair. To be fair, I don't think of Wolfsbane. (laughs) Why would you? Um, she's also like, she's a bit orange. Um, The figure's a bit orange? Yeah, like her her whole, like the 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 fur could be a little browner. Okay, and I, I mean, it's coming off to me. It's coming off pretty brown as it is. Like the and the fact that she uses, uh, Polaris's body, um, it's not great because like that's that's as far as she can bend forward. Mm-hmm. Um. So as a, yeah, like as a as a wolfy character like that's she can't really hunker um the face isn't bad but like it's just kind of a wolf spain but i mean to be fair i'm gonna i want to do this there's not much to add to certain figures well yeah i mean she comes with there really isn't and I'm I'm not talking about she comes with little fists, but I'm not talking yeah. about accessories necessarily. Um, she just feels like, and it, she does have a fur texture, um, but there's not. I don't know. I don't. I don't quite know how to express it. Like they just like threw her together in an afternoon or something. Um, Probably did. But yeah, like the, it's 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 just not great. It's good to have a wolfsbane, but I don't think we're gonna worry about like seeing her on the end of the year list or anything. Yeah, um, it's just sort of like, all right, done. X factor, check. Um, which is nice, but it's just not great. Like, weird build, weird look. Not the best. But what can you do? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go to where you started the show. I'm going to go G.I. Joe. Some classifieds here. Uh, scooped up me a Zorana. Now, I already had her in box, and I had toyed with the idea of unboxing my Zorana to join the gang up there. Just to have the complete, like, when Torch comes out and when Xander comes out, I'd, I'd like to have them all unboxed. And so at Toy Hyo, where I found those um, Guardians guys, 
There she was sitting there, inbox, complete, never open, with a $10 price tag. And I went, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I scooped up Zorana for 10 bucks. She's a really cool-looking figure, too. I left the, the cartoon color hair. I didn't give her the mohawk. I, I, I really do like this hair better. Um, but, you know, her little goofy saw weapon, her knife... Uh, her knife gun type weapon that really doesn't fit very well in her backpack, but she's still a really good looking figure. I mean, she really is. And she'll be looking great up there when I you know, get the rest of my Cobra guys up there together and just, and she's always been a, a, a real favorite of mine. Again, that the females, um, this character I scooped up that I wasn't originally going to, but again, I couldn't, pa like I said, the price tags on these figures, I couldn't, pass up. That's how they get Free you. I'm sorry? That's how they get you. Yeah. Um, and again, for 10, maybe 15. Tiger Force Outback was not going to pick him up. And he, you know, he's still on websites and Big Bad Toy Store and I think Hasbro Pulse for $25, $27 or the heck he is. And so when I saw him for 10 bucks, I said, you know what? He's a unique figure. They never made him in the U.S. Again, the price tag was just what I was about willing to pay for a Tiger Force Outback. So Tiger Force Outback. He's going on the wall. I'm not opening him um, because I refused to buy two of him, even for $10 a piece or whatever the heck they were. Yeah, I know you're not. So, a, I mean, a little different. He's got instead instead of the you know instead of the redhead that he is, he's a he's you know he's he's a gray beard. Um, he's got you know thank God you know he he put a shirt on instead of survival because he's a survivalist. It says it's a tiger because he's in Tiger Force. I'd wear that shirt. I, yeah. Well, okay. I would too, but not like if I'm you know in the jungle. Um, but he's still he's still not a bad looking figure. He's still yeah, a good looking cool. figure and. Uh, a nice, a nice mold, a nice sculpt. Uh, the, the fact that he's, you know, gray uh, gives him some age. So, you know, he's going to go up on a wall. We're going to go with this set of two. This was actually the first. This this started the pile a couple of months ago after our first toy store uh, or after our last uh, episode. Haven't unboxed him yet. Not sure I'm going to only because I don't know. I don't think I need to. But he was also on sale, and this was the most expensive of all the figures that I purchased that I'm about to show you today. Snake Eyes and Timber. And it's the two-pack that comes with Timber as the White Wolf. Now, I had him, I purchased them early on where Timber's the Gray Wolf. Um, I think it's still the same mold. I'd have to look at the, I'll have to look at the Snake Eyes. This one might be a little more... Um, com, uh, version two snake eyes, a little more the, the the one that everybody loves, myself included, who I think is the perfect version of snake eyes. But to come with timber as a white wolf um, is really a neat concept. But like I said, I've got him open already with timber in gray. Not not really sure I'm going to crack this one open. This one just might be a display piece. Who knows if they're in there? They could be cardboard sticks again. We'll never know. Um, but still one of my favorites and again was wasn't originally gonna scoop him up but when I was you know scrolling around this was in May um, and he popped up and again for the price he normally is for the price I got him for I went I, I got to so I did which is maybe a, a, you know a different addiction but yeah good looking figures though just just classic snake eyes classic timber good stuff. Yeah, I was I was surprised when you held it up. I went, "Oh, cool!" Wait, he didn't have that? No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Um, do you think classified will be around long enough for them to get to the point where they make uh, blue snake eyes? God, I hope not. I no, I hope they're around that long. I just hope they never make him. But what, but what if he what if he still came with like the neon weapons? Don't care. The one they just came the the the, the desert strike snake eyes yeah, and the like... bright oranges and tans. Look, snake eyes is the face of GI Joe. 
Everyone knows who Snake Eyes is. But they put him in some bad outfits. And there are some bad outfits. I have some in bad outfits. No. you They I, should have left him alone at version 2. Version 3 with the Spider-Man goggles and everything? No. Version 2 was the best version of Snake Eyes, period. Hands down, the end. Which is why he's probably still the mo one of the most expensive figures. Complete. Unbroken crotches. No, he has both of his thumbs, what have you. Because he's so he's that good, he's that I good. Love, I, I I love Blue Snake Eyes though with his his big like red goggles and and what uh, is is very very nineties. Um, and that's the that's the Snake Eyes I had, and and yeah, he saw wrong, a lot of work. That's the wrong Snake Eyes. <laughs> um, last of the GI Joe classifieds I bought uh, unbox again got, I think a heck of a deal on him. Because when I asked the price and the guy told me, I was like, really? Is he complete? And he was like, yeah. Um, I got Breaker on the Ram motorcycle. So this is one of the first classifieds that came out with, with a vehicle. It's the Ram motorcycle that has the side machine gun. Breaker is the communications officer. Um, one of the original eight um, G.I. Joe members with his little headset, his little sunglasses and visor. So I, th I, this was not in box. This this came like this. This was just sitting out on this table. And I believe when Breaker came out, $35, $40, because he's one of the um, deluxe versions. Want to know what I paid for Breaker and, and, and the Ram? $15. There you go. 15 bucks. When I yeah. said, hey, is that, what are you asking for Breaker? He was like, 15 I haven't looked. I yeah. really wasn't searching for that one because again, I didn't want. I didn't want the motorcycle. I would have just taken Breaker. But it was like fifteen bucks. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why the pile kept just growing. So there's my GI Joe classifieds. Um, this is a, but he's a really good figure too, and this is a really good sculpt on the motorcycle and uh, on him and. Just and he had a box of weapons sitting there, and I think they were just left over from other pieces. And he actually had some of his own pieces because, like, one guy was like, Who's this guy? He's like, Oh, I created that guy. So he had taken a bunch of parts from a classified and made his own GI, which I thought was cool. I wasn't gonna buy any, but they were they were, they were really neat. But he had a lot of leftover weapons. He's like, I don't think Breaker came with weapons, so pick a weapon. Uh, okay, so I picked a weapon. <laughs> so there's my little classified file, there's my Marvel. And my classifieds, and we've got um, more piles to go through. I'm I'm glad you picked up some Tiger Force because I, I I know you're not thrilled by Tiger Force, but I I'm like not. that at ten dollars you like Tiger Force. Sure. Um, I bought. I'm switching back to me. Yeah. I'm gonna do. I'll do two real quick. Okay. Um, I bought a figure that I've wait no this is correct uh, bought a figure that I've never had a version of before but I saw it uh, at the store this week um, and I picked up an evil Lynn oh this is the uh, revelations version which if you've seen the show you I don't think you can disagree with me that she's one of the best characters in the series. Yeah. Um, like her a whole storyline is fantastic uh, through those two seasons. Um, she's one of the most dynamic characters uh, on the show. And that like she actually changes and develops and grows as a person. Um, and just real cool. I've never had an evil Lynn. Um, so when I saw one of these sitting on a shelf, um, looked at it for a little while and went, yeah, I think it's time. Um, so we're going to play a little game of do I take it out of the box? Are the others out of the box? Just my other like Motu figures. Yeah. Then yeah, she comes out. <clears throat> Yes, that is the correct answer. She's coming out. Um, I will try to hold her up there 
There's oh, so much hair? glare on this. Yeah. No, she, she, she does have a uh, secondary head in there without her like weird hat. Um, with, I'd go with her hair head down. Too. I'm probably going to use that one. But the, the best part of uh, this figure, Kohan, uh, was the price. And this is why I stumbled upon it. Um, do you want to guess how much I got Evil Lynn for? 15 bucks. Uh, you wish. It was $5.50. Um, and it's definitely coming out of the box because the back of it is just a stroke. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. Um, but that's that's the right move, though. Yeah. There's no like, saving I'm, that. Rip, yep, rip that uh, open. Nah, she's... she's... The the art on here, I'm sure, was magnificent. Like, look at the look at the side of it; it's fantastic. Um, but now she's she's gonna be popping right out there, and and she's gonna look great up on the shelf. Excellent, um, good find. So I'd, I'd been thinking about getting Eva Lynn for a while, just because she was so great on the show. Um, like they they did, did her so, they um, did her justice in a big way. The, who's the the uh, Lena Olin from Game of Thrones? Didn't she voice her? Yes. Yeah. Um, the second Motu figure I got um, is is right up there with previous ones on the show um, because when it's when it comes to bad guys in Motu for me, there's Stinkor, there's Too Bad. Uh, and when it comes to good guys, there's Mechanek, and there's Cyclone. Ooh. And the, the new Eternia uh, Cyclone came out recently, um, and he is exactly the thing that I enjoy about this sort of thing. Um, and just, like, toy collecting in this day and age, because I love sort of grown-up versions of the figures I had when I was little. Because I mm -hmm. can go out and get, like, vintage original He-Man figures. Um, but I'd, I'd much rather have better ones. <laughs> and Cyclone looks great. Like, he's he's still got the same, like, just saturated primary colors, but they're not as glaring as the original ones. Like, the yellow has sort of... It's... it's almost got that sort of gold metallic uh, mm -hmm. finish to it that the old Iron Man did, um, which I think works really well because I, I, in my He-Man head canon, um, Cyclone is definitely from outer space. Um, like he looks like he came from another planet. So, so did He-Man's mom. <laughs> so I, I like him looking. I mean, I and I think it was all the like planetary imagery that he had. Like, I don't know if that's going to focus, um, but the little emblem on his belt is like a, a planet with a, a ring around it. Um, and and they they did exactly what I wanted with this figure, just like they did with Mechanek and Stinkor and Too Bad and everybody else, and that they just made a very cool version of him. He's got his round yellow shield. Um, they took some inspiration from previous lines. I guess, I think it was the 2000s version of him that mm -hmm. added like big red rings to him. And so if, if you had seen the uh, origins version that they put out recently had big red rings that came with it. This one just had a couple of sort of, almost flame effects which you can put around like you can slot into the shield okay so it almost looks like it's spinning around like cyclone did or you can just put them right into his arm there so he can do cool punches um and the the last thing about him which i think i mean he doesn't have the lenticular chest piece but he's still got uh, a cool thing there. Um, and then they also added this feature, um, which instead of, it's, it's not a helmet, but a little face mask that you can stick on there. Um, 
cover up his weird blue face that is just a different shade of blue than the rest of them. <laughs> uh, but he's been, I mean, he's been out of the box for a little while now and standing up on the shelf right next to Mechanek. Um, and it just looks good. And, and it, I don't know how much longer they're going to stick with New Eternia because I don't know how many figures they have left to go because I feel like they've put out a bunch um, but out of the, the He-Man figures that like I would need um, we're doing really good other than like Snake Men which that would be amazing right um, I, don't, I don't really know how uh, many I have left because I've got you know like I said Mechanic and Cyclone were my other good guys. Um, Stinkhorn Too Bad were my main bad guys. So I'm, I'm real happy to see them. So we'll see what uh, cool. comes next. But is we're waiting on that Rio blast. But it's it's it makes me very happy to see a, a new Eternia Cyclone. Masters of the Universe is very good. Your turn. No. So let's start with uh, let's go. We'll hit the big three off the bat. We did Marvel. We did G.I. Joe. Let's do some WWE. And for a figure that just came out, once again, I found him. I was going to get him. I saw him at Walmart pass him up originally. Um, oops, sorry. Um, then saw him at the uh, Neotech meetup for much cheaper. Uh, L.A. Knight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i believe it's his rookie figure i could be wrong but no better time to scoop it up now when this guy is hotter than molasses and uh again walmart wants him for 23 25 maybe 30 uh, with a 20 dollar price tag again i couldn't walk away so when you saw him for twenty dollars, you said what now? Yeah. <laughs> then also recently, I think in the same lineup, I did pay a little more for this one, but with a huge win last night on SmackDown, punching her ticket to money in the bank. Oh, it's Chelsea Green. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And I wish I had got her before, or I wish I had hadn't opened her before I went to Toy Hio. And Matt Cardona signed her. Would he have done it? How great would that have been? Sure he would. But he does that all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like a but I I love her. I mean he when when she won uh God, what championship did she win? Like he bought a he bought a copy of the belt the next day and wore it to his next match. Like yeah, I, I mean sign is bigger. She's so they've met her, her character is so great. And she Best. does whatever is asked of her. And you watch her in interviews, and she, she gets it. She's like, I know I'm not the best in-ring competitor, but I'm learning. But I just go out there and have fun. And, like, she was recently asked about, like, if Cardona would come back to WWE. And she's like, I don't want him there. She's like, you know when you're, you, you, you live with someone, and then you work with someone, and you travel on the road with someone? You need some meat. And of course, the trolls on the internet were like, oh, when you marry a person, you should be with them 24-7. Love them unconditionally. Um, no. Sometimes you need your space. They're, they're, you're sick of them. They're sick of you. You need those moments to... Yeah. So I would love... you know, I, I But she's just... Uh, maybe not the best looking figure, but but the, the whole flared skirt, the stupid hat, <laughs> and just... just just it's Chelsea. She's so good at being so bad. She's very good. She's very good. So two recent superstars. That's nice. Now we're going to put, I'm going to put classic in quotes because these are two of my all time favorites. And you want to talk about annoying, goofy individuals, but a great tag team. And they never should have split them up because you know what they are? They're iconic! Peyton Rice and Billy Kay. Oh, 
They were so good. They were so good as a team. You don't know who these are, do you? Nope. Oh, this. So a little bit before you got back into it. Yeah. These two are both from Australia. They're real life best friends. Um, they were Peyton Rice and Billy Kay. Um, was Peyton? This is Peyton. This is Billy. And uh, they were iconic. It was two eyes. I iconic. And uh, they would come out and they would do the, they were just so annoying on the microphone and they were so over the top and they thought they were so funny and they would just be just, just say these awful things. They would, they, they always do this pose together back to back with their mics and do this whole f head and uh, head, uh, hair flip thing. And they were just great. And they were really good as a tag and you saw them build up and build up. And they finally actually, they beat Bailey and Sasha at WrestleMania for the tag team titles after Bailey and Sasha had established those belts. And there was this whole big controversy that Bailey and Sasha were PO'd and blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Um, but then, um, you know, they, they, they ended up losing them, but they, but when they won them and then they eventually lost them and then they split them up. And that was the worst thing they could have done because none of them, they were not good solo acts. They tried, mm -hmm. they tried, they like, they tried to put Billy Kay back with the team. They tried to make Peyton Royce. And I liked, I always liked Peyton a little bit better than Billy Kay for no real reason i maybe i thought she was a little smoother in the ring and that's just me um but by we're talk we're splitting hairs there and we're splitting beard hairs but they were so good together and i they were so much fun to watch and they played like chelsea green they played their parts so well when it took for them to get the snap beat out of them they took it when it took for them to be devious and manipulative they did it when it didn't be goofy as i'll get out they did it and they're just they're they're, they're great they're both retired now i believe i think one of them, I think, I think Peyton Royce just re recently had a baby. I'm not sure if she's pregnant or not. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I would love to see them back. And like to see them appear like on um, Up, Up, Down, Down with Xavier Woods on that channel and just, just see them like years ago, what have you. They're, they're just, I really was not hunting them. I don't even realize that I, they made them, but at Toy Ohio. I was just sifting through this box and I found Peyton Royce first and I went, oh, do they have Billy Kay? And I, there she was. I was like, they're coming home. <laughs> there was not, there was not a hesitation of bringing the Iconics home. That's my little WWE haul. Excellent. Want a little, want a little sorbet to cleanse the palate before we move on as a, as a one-off? Cause it was just a stupid grab. Maybe at a moment of weakness. At Kid Force. Michael Knight. <laughs> is that a, it's is that a reaction seven, figure? It is the Michael Knight reaction figure. Michael Knight. I saw it sitting there. I I said, you know, <laughs> that would go cool with my Knight Rider stuff. So... This kit displayed beautifully on the cover. This is the back of the card. It's a nice Michael card. Knight. It is a nice card. I can't even. A, 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 mm -hmm. a detective thought to be dead, just under a new identity. He is driven by justice and set out to take down crime with the help of Kit, a futuristic, artificially intelligent car outfitted with high tech gadgets and weapons. Do 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 Oh, don't hassle the Hoff. Look at that. Beautiful chest here. <laughs> Leather coat, boots, jeans, classic Michael Knight. Yeah, so I couldn't help it. So he came home. It, it, the card is really beautiful, too. Um, but yeah, a little sorbet. A little sorbet to cleanse the palate to let you know where we're going. <laughs> How... How is that supposed to signal where we're going? That's just it. That's where we're going. All right, let's do one more. I'll do one more to really just throw you off. <clears throat> At Toy Ohio. Well, the flag needed some more decorations. Gosh, it does not. So we went with the Persuader. Yes. I love this one. Came with a backstop, the missiles. The guy was like, 
I'm sorry, I'm missing his helmet and his gun and no file card. I'm like, that's not a problem. It's kind so of a this... problem. His his helmet is very important. Yeah, but I already have this. Okay. <laughs> I already have the figure, the helmet, and the gun. Okay, I didn't have the vehicle or the missiles. Vig figure very, very, very tightly done. Very, very, look at that. I mean, just okay. nice coloration on him. Yeah, he's well taken one. care of. Probably, probably redone or put together. But, you know, let me get, the, well, let me get him in this little, him in this little persuader. Let me get him in, we'll get him in the persuader. Well, the back staff. Yeah. Bam! Hits him in the head. Knocks him unconscious. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, I just realized one thing. Hmm, I may have gotten robbed. I just realized this had the decals on it. You know, well, I know where to find those. And I'm going to South Carolina soon. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, so I scooped him up. Uh, an another guy had him, had the decals. Um, did not have uh, it was it was not as complete. Um, I think still missing things like uh, the gun and what have you. Um, this was twenty bucks cheaper, so I scooped this up for uh, again. I, I know I'm shouting on a lot of prices, but it was thirty five dollars, and I've seen it as as low as fifty five. And as high as like 70. Mm -hmm. So at 35, uh, when I don't, when I already have the gun and the helmet, okay, I have to buy decals. I, I literally, literally just noticed that it didn't have the decals on it. So maybe that's why it was 35, but I don't care. <laughs> so classic, classic Gian Yo. And you know what? You put one in the box. One in the back gun, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. It holds a total of eight figures. Oh, my God. Which frees up even more <sighs> I had a, a Pris Waiter growing up. I'm a big fan of that one. That's a good uh, and I And I did you know, litter it with, with everybody else riding on the side. Uh, as well, it's a it's a real good one. That's why I'm a big fan of. I don't remember. I've already forgotten the guy's name who drives it. Um, backstop. Backstop. Right, Would you like to know his real name? Of course. I believe. That I I may have to be cross checked on this one. I think it's Robert M. Levine. I think I think that's his name. I mean, he had a he had a killer helmet. Um, and you know that's what I'm looking for in a in a Joe. So this is my original figure. Sorry. Obviously not as uh look, he's balding. It's got he's some balding. gray spots. Yeah. Do you mean you mean this helmet? Yep. <laughs> Things yeah. fantastic. I need a helmet. I got it. With the, with just the, the extra long like chin strap thing. Probably a probably a, a, a walkie-talkie receiver right here where you could talk right into it, right? Maybe. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Like that one. The one classic Joe I've gotten recently, the Persuader with backstop. There you go. Okay. Have a go. Um. So earlier I was talking about the. Iron Man figure um, and how the one set of Avengers that I have is from the old arcade game. Uh, and one of the things I've found that I've, like, I've learned about myself in the little niches of collecting um, that, that I delve in is that one of the more niche niches that I collect for um, our old video games. Um, and that's why I keep looking up here to see if I can think of any uh, real good examples off the top of my head. But I, I know in one of our old episodes, I got a Bionic Commando figure um, that, I, that I showed off. Um, the team of X-Men that I have on the, the shelf is the old arcade game team, which also happens to be the, the pride of the X-Men team. Um, but especially old arcade games um, hold such a, a 
like just a fun place in my memory. Um, but I, I am really drawn to things that connect me to the, the video games that I was um, just really interested in as a kid. Um, so in a, a similar uh, in a, a similar way for you pulling out a random Michael Knight, I did a, a, an impulse buy as well when I was wandering through Walmart one day. Um, and I bought a werewolf uh, from the old video game Altered Beast. Okay. Never played it, but I know of it. Yeah. Um, and it was one where I, it was not a game I had but it was one I was familiar with and, and played a handful of times. Um, never had it like on a console version. Um, but just the idea of, and, and this seems so mundane now, but if, if you think of it in like, God, 1991 terms or whatever, um, a, a video game where like you could transform from like one character into another was very cool and not necessarily in the same way as, as like now I'm big Mario or something, but like you're a, a whole different visual, like, like visually you're different. Your skills and abilities are different. Uh, plus you're a werewolf. Um, and plus Alter beast was just a cool looking game. Like there, there were a lot of real simple uh, video games back in the day. We didn't have that many bits to make video games out of. Um, I mean, look at that, that pixel art werewolf on the back there. Um, and he was just real cheap. He was at Walmart for like 10 bucks. Still debating whether or not I'm going to open them. I don't know what I'd do with them otherwise. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is part of a line of just random video game characters. Um, I think there was one of the, the characters from like Fatal Fury uh, was out. So it is just like a nice smattering. There's not like, there's not like three other beasts that I can go out there and, and collect. Um, but I, I might need to start a little section on my shelf for video game characters because it's not the only one that I've gotten recently. Oh. Um, and I am immensely excited for the next couple of figures that I'm going to show you, Cohan. Because um, when I was growing up, around my birthday, because it was just my birthday, um, so my birthday is also right when school would get out. And when you were a little kid and you got your report card, um, and it was also your birthday, um, you could take your report card and your birthday have and self uh, down to like for most people, it would be like a Chuck E. Cheese um, or where we grew up, Mark's Funtime Pizza Palace and get, you know, a bunch of, of... Where did you grow up? Northeastern Ohio. <laughs> you remember Mark's Funtime Pizza Palace? Not at all. Oh, man, it was great. Because um, they'd, they'd give you tokens if you got good grades. And then you could spend them all playing the X-Men arcade game. Um and, but if you needed a break from the X-Men arcade game, you would go and find one of the other like Konami or Capcom uh, beat-em-ups. You'd play a final fight. Um, you'd play Altered Beast. Um, or you'd play one of the greatest uh, arcade beat-em-ups of all time, Captain Commando. Um hmm. And it happened. I have a Captain Commando figure. I had to order these from Japan. You notice I did not mock you for that figure. <laughs> I had to order this from Japan and get it shipped across the entire darn world. Um, because there was only like one place you could find it. And I had to fight for this because it sold out so fast. And I had to check it and check it again to see if it ever like came into stock. 
you know how like sometimes it'll just say like out of stock or um, <laughs> like pre-orders closed or whatever if you look this up now it just says discontinued so like like i think i ordered this in like november finally came in in like march um and the thing was i let it sit around for a while um because like the captain commando video game there's more than just captain commando oh, um there's also the ninja there's also the baby in a mech suit and there's also <laughs> there's also the mummy that wields two big daggers uh good old good old mac the knife there um and so like i i let it sit there hoping that the the rest of them could would come in so far i got mac the knife okay um the the other two as 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 soon as they show up i'll have them shipped across the planet <laughs> i'm so happy because you know i got all four good stuff because you, you you know i had to to get the whole select screen um well, I applaud you. I applaud you for this. And they're like they're they're not like they're fine. It's yeah, like they're, they're, they're fine guys. They're GI <laughs> Joe sized. Um, good articulation on them. Like they 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 can pose real well. Um, and I have a Captain Commando action figure. It's twenty twenty four. I have a Captain Commando action figure. What that's, world is this? Uh, that's great. That's, that's a, fantastic. A, a, a Mac the knife figure, and you know what, Cohen? He comes with two big knives. So and one day, named. one day, I'll have all four of them, including the literal baby that who drives a mech little. suit. I don't remember this. Sorry, there's a mark on my screen. I don't remember that video game at all. At all. I have no recollection of this, but it just makes me happy that they exist and you have them. Okay. Let's just say there's a, a you know, side scrolling classic nineties beat 'em up. Yeah. That stars like some sort of cybernetic punching cop. Like he's got mm -hmm. the star on there. Yeah. A zombie with two knives. Um he's or a mummy with two knives. I, I believe in his description, he is described as an alien warrior. He's a mummy. Okay. Um, and his, his spin attack will mess you up. One is just a ninja, Ginzu the ninja, and the other is a baby in a mech suit. What's It'll the baby's be... name? Baby head. Is it really? Baby head. I, I can't see that. Yeah, I guess, like, the baby head. A baby, baby uh, head. And and those are the four characters of the same game. That's awesome. You you'd play the, the Ninja Turtles one. You get the blue one, the orange one, the purple one, or the red one. But they're all Ninja Turtles. In Captain Commando, you get a just vomited nonsense. That's phenomenal. And I there is just this this large warm welcoming place in my heart for classic beat em up side you scrollers a, you have a warm and fuzzy feeling deep down in your tum tums like the the x men arcade game um captain commando final fight and all their friends just come on over you're 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 safe here now Like we will never see these figures again. You're not gonna run into these in no. stores unless it's like that store is really on top of things. Um God, if we ever see them at a show, it'll be amazing. Um What do I what do I do with these? You cherish them? Do I you... open them? I would not. I wouldn't. But they would but especially all four of them, they would look so good. And one is a they're, they're, baby. They're yours, man. They are, they, they are your toys. They You do with them what you will. Me, 
the fact that they're discontinued and who knows, we'll get to something in a minute. Um, but who knows? I, I, that's, that's your call. They're your toys. You open them or not open them. There are, there are collectors who love to have their toys breathe. There are others who swear mint and box is the way to go. And then there's you and I who open some and don't. <laughs> It's going to be a rough decision, but yeah. Captain Commando figures, get out of here. Yeah, it's almost as about as ridiculous as what I'm about to show you. Also, Good. at Neo Tech, these, these are big, hefty boxes, too. I kept walking by and by and by and going, Do I really want them? And the more I circulated and, and returned to the table, and look, this is the same guy who's in the Crimson Guard, by the way. Um, had these on uh, 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 price, I thought, relatively fair. And when I looked, came home and looked, at, looked them up, I found they're a little more expensive than what he charged me for. They're, these are hefty boxes. Hefty. But why in God's name did I have to buy Jay and Silent Boss? <laughs> There's Jay. Yep, yep, and then, yep, and there's good old Silent Bob. I'm so jealous. For the price. Um, Al, I've been saying it all, all um, episode long with the Alan Met. It the pair was forty dollars. That's twenty bucks a pop. And I looked online, Fantastic. I saw them as low as I think fifty. I think as high as like 80 at one point. Wow. Yeah, these are beefy boxes too. But I kept walking by going, it's from Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. I'm like, why do I want these figures so badly? Why do I want them so badly? I don't, I don't. And I'd come back and they were still there. And I would come back and they were still there. So for about the little over an hour maybe I think I was there, I, I, said, I said to the fellow, look, man, I've walked by these figures so much. I obviously want them. Big beefy boxes. Big beefy boxes. Are those? Are they Diamond Select? They indeed are. Okay, I was gonna say they look like Diamond Select boxes. Yeah. Um. And uh, you know they have the. Let's see if we can see it on there. Those are great. They come with the back of the video store. If you open them up. But I don't want to open them up. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those. They're so good. That's... Aren't they? Yeah. They're very good. <laughs> I, I had no idea I wanted these. <laughs> I had no idea these existed. Like, I, I know I'm, I'm a, a... It's no secret I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. I, oh, but I... Yeah. I, I don't know why you would want a Jay and Silent Bob pair. I'm a huge guy. I have, I have, a, I have an autographed Mallrats poster. You do have that big Mallrats poster. I do. I, I love Kevin Smith. I have a Jason Mused autographed Stinkor. You do. But I've got Jay and Silent Bob. Very good. But yeah. These are beefy boxes. Yeah, Just... Diamond Selects are... Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, John and I have been talking recently a lot on the phone. And uh, last year, my buddy introduced me to The Legend of Va uh, Vox Machina. Great cartoon. Great cartoon. Recently started we watching it. Have been watching uh, their second campaign. But... When I discovered <clears throat> the Legend of Vox Machina had toys. <laughs> not a whole lot, not the whole group that I could find. But you got Keyleth, Marisha, voices her. You've got Percy, voiced by Talis and Jaffe. And then you got the twins, Vex 
and Vax. Reverse that. Vax and Vax. Sorry, held them up the wrong way. Voiced by uh, Liam O'Brien and uh, Laura Bailey. And uh, I ordered a three-pack, and it was the twins and Percy. At least that's what I thought I ordered. And so I got online, and I was like, oh, I need to get the last one, so I ordered Keelan. Well, when the three-pack came, I was like, oh, it was the twins and Keelan. <laughs> so I had to order Percy. So I have a second Keelan, who I opened, and these are gorgeous <laughs> figures. <laughs> These are gorgeous figures. Uh, I, she fell off. I, she, I, I knocked her off her stand. But they stand well. They pose well. McFarlane Toys did a hell of a job on these figures. They are beautiful. Haven't decided if I'm unboxing the other ones yet. I only unboxed her because of... I had two. <laughs> but uh, just... just I don't know. I don't know if it's any better. But you can see the little freckles... Keyleth is a great character. Guess when I, I watched the release, when is season three coming out, the final season of Legend of Vox Machina? Of the animated series. Yes, the animated series. October 3rd. Ooh. So, yeah. It's right before his birthday. Yeah. So... I got the Legend uh, of Vox Machina figures. Now, you you said you've started watching actual Critical Role, having seen the animated show. Um, yes. How, how long ago was it that you started watching the beginning of Campaign 2? Uh, last week? Maybe the week before. So but roughly, week. roughly two weeks. Roughly. Okay. And in that time, you've watched how many episodes? I just finished episode forty-six today. And that's starting from episode one, just to make sure that's yes. clear. Yeah. <laughs> I have almost you watched have... nothing else. Over the past two weeks, you, I've taken you some breaks in dived in and you went deep, man. But but also it was like it'll be on like I'll have it on like if I'm like if I'm cleaning the house or cooking or doing doing dishes or whatever I'll still have it on. So, but there's a lot of times that I owe these people in my life. <laughs> okay, your turn. How, I got and, two more sets. and that's I mean it is the. Like, that's the dream. Can you imagine seeing, holding, like, a real action figure based on, a like, one of your D&D characters? That would be... And not ones... And we do have some. Our friends have made some for us. But something like this? No. Right? No. I can't. And it, I would love... I would love it. All right. Um, there's there's a, a, a comic book store that I've been visiting um, the last couple of times I needed to buy comics. Uh, and they had this up on the shelf. Um, and, and I couldn't decide whether or not um, I needed to add it to my collection. If I did, what the heck would I even do with it? Um, but I, I decided shortly before we were going to do this episode, and by that I mean like earlier this week, um, to, to pick it up next time when went by. And this is kind of amusing when you think that we're recording this shortly after uh, Mondo put out their like giant um, Cyclops figure for their, their line of giant animated figures because he's not the first time there's been a giant Cyclops figure. Um, so I, I got a giant Cyclops figure this week. <laughs> uh, and I have a couple of these these real, real big Toy Biz ones. There's the cable over there. You can kind of see the Shatterstar one up there. 
Um, and as, as many Cyclops figures that I have, I'd, I'd never, you know, given the, the green light to getting one of the giant ones, um, even though, especially after learning more about, like, the, the toy making process, and especially, like, toy bizzes, um, and how a lot of these big ones are just, like, the, the straight up prototypes before they, you know, shrink them down to make them. Uh, been real interested in, in picking up the Cyclops version because I, I literally have the regular one right behind your head uh, on my wall on the other side of my computer. So I, I, I picked this one up um, and it's weird because the box is great, but it is is used. Like you can hear them rocking around in there. Yeah. Um, and they had two of them. They had this one and they had one that was like uh, gosh, fifty percent more expensive. And if you if you read the fine print, uh, weapon quote unquote is included. Oh, thank God you know, he comes with a gun. Yeah, Cyclops's signature gun that he uses <laughs> all the time. Um, because and the other one that was much more expensive had his gun hanging up uh, in this little thing behind him. So I figured, oh darn, it doesn't. You know, I won't have Cyclops's gun, except it does. It's it's you can see it down there in the uh -huh. bottom. It's just not in the actual like thing that's supposed to hold it up. So it's it's complete. Um, I just haven't. I've I've only had this a couple of days, so I haven't busted it open to see if I could futz with it yet, uh, and like put that back on there. Um, and it is kind of weird because even on the back, I'm, I might have to get that saber tooth Cohan. They they had one at the same shop that was even less expensive than the Cyclops, and it, like that is a good one. But you can you can almost see there's like a little space in his arm there, uh, and I've been looking at him and comparing him to the regular sized figure. Um, and one of the differences is his arm. The other is his head, which is weird. Like this one looks a little pinched mm -hmm. on the side and the, the regular one does not have uh, that problem. So I don't know what happened to squishy head over here, um, but I'm going to investigate that further. Uh, and then I'm going to figure out where the heck I'm going to put him. Cause he's not fit on a shelf. Um, but I, I'm excited to slowly pick up some of these big guys. There's, there's a couple more that if I ever see them at the right price, I will get up. They, they did make a metallic version of, of Cyclops. So it'll be keep my eye out for that one. But he's, this, this is just a fun pick uh, to add to the, the old Toy Biz collection. I don't need all the big ones. Um, but like, yeah, I'm gonna get a Cyclops. Come on, I got big Cyclops. You did. All right, let me give you this little pile. Um, walked around Toy Ohio, passed this several times. Didn't even realize I passed it until I finally took a deeper look. And uh, remember those aliens figures I've been talking about finding and collecting? Found Ripley. Excellent. Inbox. Walmart price tag. I don't know if you can read that. Four eighty-seven. Yeah. Fantastic. Four dollars and eighty-seven cents. The playmates. Kenner. Okay, I was gonna guess Kenner. And Hicks. I already have a Hicks. He's out of box. I open him. And I don't remember them coming with these comic books, but there's a comic books right there. And he's got a KB price tag. Oh, this must be when they first came out. $7.99. Ooh. I paid $10 for each. So they made money off me. <laughs> it's not their original price tag. After all these but years. I was talking to them. They were so sweet. I was talking to them, and I was like, I've actually been figure hunting these. This is the really the one hunt that I've been on and they didn't have there. So I got technically I want, I want two more and my collection's complete. Um, but with Hicks and Ripley, 
I got Vasquez and Drake. You know, <clears throat> and these are these are really good condition. Um, you know, boxes are a little 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 bent, but they're they're in they're in good condition. I mean, they get you excited. Hicks on his package it says fires two alienator missiles. Alienator trademark. Ripley with real turbo torch action. Great. <laughs> I'm excited to fight aliens. But I got Ripley. They're going to go up there with Vaz and Drake. Two more. I need to get Apone and Bishop. Um, they have some other ones. I probably will not be. The power loader might be fun to get depending on its price. But um, I, I want the I want the uh, I want the guys, and even Apo. They, and, I mean, they're not good figures. They're not. I just love the movie. It is in my top five favorite movies of all time. Um, comes that they even have their own tiny little file cards in the back. There's Michael Bean. There's Sigourney Weaver. Up, I, I'm sure Jeanette Goldstein and um, who plays Drake? Mark. Begins with an R. Is this Mark Ralston? Ralstein? I think that's who plays them. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, two more. Two more alien figures, and I think two more to go, and I think I'm going to be done with that collection. But they're going to go on the wall. So, that was a, nice. that, those, those were a, a, a real fun find for me. I, I was really excited when I was talking to the, the woman who was selling them. I was like, I'm actually looking for these. And she had she had a couple of drakes. She had some... Uh, couple of the aliens and i was like you don't happen to have an eight pone do you I was like, no sorry what we got is here's like oh but that's okay it's okay that means the hunt is still on collection still going and it's a cheap collection of button to, to pick up on except for bass um my last figure is i know this sounds i don't know redundant um given where we are um but this one's pretty special to me um, because on top of all the like foundational parts of, of my collecting, like my you know pile of Cyclopses um, and my battle armor He Mans um, and just all the other sort of very important uh, lanes that I, I collect in, there's a certain sort of obscure action figure that is sort of the linchpin um, of my interest in toy collecting. Um, and it's, it's one that has held a very important place in my heart since I was a very young child. Um, um, and it's, it's just our, our good friend Hachi Man. Uh, this is the, the original Thundercats version that's been up on, on my shelf for uh, quite some of? time. Um, well, interestingly enough, a handful of years ago, uh, a handful of years ago, um, when mm -hmm. you really started getting back into collecting and, and building out, uh, your stuff, uh, you picked up one of these bad boys for me. Um, And, and it's really what got me back in the game. I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> um, but but Hachiman has a, a special place in my heart because he's also sort of a, a villain origin story uh, for me. As he was a, a figure that I had as a child in, in my sort of little collection of, of Thundercats at the time. Um, but he's also... And not to, not to put them too on blast, um, but he's also a figure that was tragically lost uh, to me as a child uh, when one of my parents got mad at me one day and chucked him across the house and busted him into several pieces. Oh, no. Um, because Hachiman has this little hip action, and, and there's no way I'm ever going to show it, but he is connected between his top and bottom halves, like very specifically in order to do that and very precariously as well. 
So when he's hurled like 30 feet and meets the corner of a wall, he's very susceptible to death. Yeah. Um, and he was, he was never replaced uh, growing up, which is, is tragic um, because he has one of the most fantastic helmets known to man. Um, like, just, just look at that thing. And just, I didn't just, realize he was a villain. I thought he was a, I thought he was a good guy. Um, slow your roll now. Let's, Sorry. Uh, Hachiman was tricked by Mumra into fighting the Thundercats. He eventually figured out uh, what was actually going on uh, and ended up being a valuable ally uh, of the Thundercats because he is a very noble samurai. Um, so since our last episode, I now have new Hachi Man. Yes. I'm so happy for you. Um, his his new Super 7 version finally released um, after I pre-ordered it like almost a year ago. Um, came in a box. You can hear all his extra hands rolling around in there. Um, and he is just gorgeous. I mean, look at, look at them, look at them next to each other. And this is exactly the type of thing I was talking about with Cyclone in that like the, the retro original figures are nice and nostalgic, but there's just something so cool about having like a, a modern grown up version of your your favorite things to sort of see them like compared to how they actually were to sort of see them in a version that actually matches what you had in your imagination because there were there were limits to what action well, figures one, could do in the you know 80s and early 90s sure the one in your left hand though is a toy made to be played with by kids and let's face it we said this over and over how i mean that toy can be played with by kids in your right hand but they're hitting at an audience that is a lot older oh yeah i mean this is a super seven figure like no no at that right. price tag are you kidding me right um but just like to see like his armor his sword, his posability. Um, and I've, I've had him, I had him on the shelf for a while. Cause like I said, he's got one of the greatest helmets known to action figure kind. Uh, and he comes with oh. an updated version of that as well, which is very cool. Um, he also comes with in, sort of energized version of his samurai sword. So you can all do all sorts of neat stuff with him. Um, but maybe a week or so I changed him from, you know, his helmeted version, the more action he posed uh, to just him as a guy sort of staying there ready to, to draw his sword, perhaps uh, waiting to see if, you know, whoever he's met is a, is a threat of, of, or, or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of like him better this way. Just. Oh, I like him better without the helmet. Right? Yeah. Like it, yeah I mean, it's, it's very nice. A lot of my Joes that come with helmets that obscure the face, most of them aren't wearing them if they're removable. I'd rather see their face, maybe have the helmet tucked under their arm or have it, you know, on the ground by their side. I want to see their face, you know? Well, you know what I think it is? Is that it's, it's not actually a helmet. It's an extra like, head. Yeah. It's just an extra head okay. that is helmeted. Um, and it still looks great. Yeah. But well, I think what we need if it was a helmet. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so yeah, I just think it, it looks neat to, to actually see him as much as I like the helmet on the, the vintage one. Um, but Kohan, just in case you were wondering, It fits. <laughs> the, the old helmet does fit. That's awesome. Fits fits on there surprisingly well. Yeah. Um. But it's. I don't know, it was it was a it was a real moment. Um. You know, getting Hachi Man out of the box. Um, there wasn't a second when I was thinking of keeping him in there. I, I will tell you though, um, as as a sign that Super Seven is on one side of the hill compared to the other. I mean, I've I've opened a handful of Super Seven uh, figures um, on this show, um, and you know what this doesn't have is a sleeve, right? Yeah, that goes over them. If you if you think back, a lot of them do. Look at my guy. Yeah. I mean, my my Duke, Scarlet, Doc, and Snake Eyes all did. Yeah. God, listen, I love this nonsense. Hachiman is a noble samurai from the planet of the Red Sun. A skilled swordsman who wields the... Do you want to guess the name of his sword? Hachi Blade. The Thunder Cutter. <laughs> Yeah. Summoned to Third Earth by Mumra and tricked into believing that the Thundercats were evil after learning of his, his deception, Hachiman became a staunch ally to Lion on the Thundercats. Thundercutter. Fantastic. Well done. Um, so, uh, this original Hachiman is one of the only gosh, only a, a couple of, like, original retro figures that I keep on my shelf um, regularly. Yeah. Uh, because on. he's just that sort of important to me as a collector. Um, and I, I can't tell you how excited I was when they announced that they were making one for the Ultimates line. Um, and then it took them a good sweet while, but it finally arrived. Um and it's, it's 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 real good. Like it's a it's a real milestone for just me as a, a collector, and it's it's a it's a real special piece. Well, that's good, man. Well, let's keep talking about Super Seven, shall we? Oh no. <laughs> um, I as we've alluded to, uh. Critical Role has been just taking my life. So, I mean, what better way than, than to get, you know, the DM. The hooded <laughs> DM. Voiced by Matt Mercer, who runs the campaign. With, it comes with a D20 and his, D, his, his Dungeon Master Guide. There's even a little backstory on the back. The hooded DM. Matt Mercer, and this is what's upsetting me because I wasn't going to open this. I was going to hang it, but it's unpunched. Ooh, snazzy! And you know, the new campaign revolves around the Mighty Nine, so why not just get the Mighty Nine? And if you count, there's only seven. There's a joke that goes with it. So you've got... <clears throat> you've got Caduceus Clay, also unpunched. Fjord, the half-orc war, uh, warlock, also unpunched. You've got one of my favorite characters. Oh, sorry. Caduceus, voiced by uh, Talus and Jaffe. And Fjord, uh, voiced by Travis Willingham. And then Travis Willingham's wife, Laura Bailey, voices uh, Jester, Louvre. And there's a joke that goes with that. Then you've got Ashley Johnson voicing Yasha uh, Norvidin. 
and she's a uh, barbarian. There's a story behind that. I got I don't know. There's some spoilers in these figures I haven't gotten to yet, and, and I can't wait. Then you've got Beauregard, Beauregard uh, Lionette, who is Matt Marisha's wife, Marisha K, I believe. It's Marisha's full name. And there's her barbarian. Ray. Also, um, a Ray, sorry. Also, Unpunched. Then you've got one of my favorite characters, voiced by Sam uh, Regal, Rigel. Uh, yeah. Not the Brave, who comes with, she's a goblin who comes with her porcelain mask for disguise. They all have this little touch of something that comes with these figures that if you watch and know the campaign. And then you've got Liam O'Brien's uh, uh, Caleb uh, Widogas, who comes with uh, Frumpkin, his cat, who he, could, who he can polymorph and transform. Human Wizard. So yeah, I got the Mighty Nine plus the DM. I told you it's going to still be my life. There are three figures I didn't order that come with this set. Because I haven't encountered them yet. But when I get to the campaign, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put those three figures. These are great. These are beautiful. They're, 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 they're Super 7. They're reaction the, figures. So the cards are hard. ridiculous. What's that? The cards are ridiculous. Oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And they all have a little blurb on their back. They're all unpunched. I was going to hang these all up. I can't do that now. I I don't know what I'm doing with these figures, but they're they're magnificent. I was telling uh, my buddies last night, and I was telling John, these people are so good at playing Dungeons and Dragons, and I don't care what you think or feel. When you watch them, I feel like a I'm in the room playing the game with them, even though I have no stake in this. They make me laugh out loud. They've made me cry real tears. The way they act, the way they stay in character, the way they deviate the plot, the way that Matt Mercer gets excited like three or four episodes ago, it went AWOL the way that it wasn't supposed to go, and they had a ball. And you find yourself cheering and caring for these characters as you're watching people play these characters. It's such an emotional roller coaster, and that's why I can't stop watching. Like, literally, I will get up, put the news on, get to the weather, then I turn on Critical Role. And it's on almost all day long. I mean, it's about three episodes then. But <laughs> so, I, I, it's it's amazing. And I and as much as I love Legend of Vox Machina, maybe it's only because I've only watched the cartoon, but seeing these characters come to life and evolve. In fact, Talos and Jaffe's original character died. And there's this whole episode of Spoilers. them. They are just like in real life. They are defeated. They're they're crying. They're in shock. Like he has to get up and leave the table as the fight goes on because he can't watch it go down. Then the next episode they start with his burial, and it's the same thing. They're just like, oh, it's so. It's it's you. It, it, you can see it happening in your head. They're, they're that good of actors. I know they're vo voice actors, as Matt Mercer says every every episode, right? A bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors, you know, here to play D&D. &D. And they're so good. And I'm so invested in this. This is my new favorite series. I love it so much. And I could not, could not help but to just get... I mean, the cards are beautiful. Like you said, the packaging. There's something going on with uh, Yasha that... We just got done with an episode of her. That literally the last episode I didn't watch. Something's going to happen with her because those are not the wings she had in that episode. And then you've got Laura Bailey who voices this character, uh, Jester. This is her magical. Um, what's it called when she uh, casts it? It's a magical weapon, and she made it a giant lollipop. And then she adopted this um, crimson weasel. And his name is Sprinkles. Actually, I think his name is Sprinkle. Um, right now, we're really going through a Forge journey. And it deals with this big Eye of Sauron type thing. Or Sauron. And the, the jokes when they started making about Ford, they'd be like, is he Ford tough? And they were like, if he gets away, is it a Ford escape? They were just dry. Oh my god! <laughs> they were so 
stupid, but so good. And like when one of them drops it, you can see the others cringe, but then they lose it. And you can tell they make inside jokes that I have no idea what they're talking about. Some of it's probably based off their laugh camp campaign. But when they start laughing, I start laughing. I don't know what they're talking about, but it's just them having a good time. And I could not stop. Like I said, like these are McFarlane, right? And you know, to hear Laura Bailey, if you haven't, have you watched Vox Machina, the cartoon? Um, like half of the first season, okay. maybe. But to hear her voice, uh, uh, Vex, with this distinguished English accent, I'm better than you, cuss and whatever. And then to hear her voice gesture, you go, how is that the same person? I mean, they are so good. You know, um, the fact that, uh, you know, the, the character's name is not N-O-T-T, not the brave. And they're a coward, so it's not the brave. But then they, you know, are sometimes brave. It's just... So, and then who's here? You've got, you've got the barbarian, or not the barbarian, the monk. Yeah, that's uh, Marisha's character. We're finding out more. There's she's still there's still a lot to find out about her. And then Caduceus. Caduceus was the second character of Talison after he lost his first. But even to have just the DM with his D twenty in his notebook is great. So yeah, there, I have eight of the Mighty Nine action figures. Wow. I couldn't help it. Like when I went online, I went to the Critical Role, Role store. I was like looking like for a eh, t-shirt, just looking around t-shirt, sweatshirt, and there's a sweatshirt that I'm definitely buying. Um, but then it was like toys. I was like, well, let's see what they got. Pink, thump. Oh, <laughs> there's not a lot. <laughs> but there's enough. And then I looked at for like Vox Machina toys, and I found those on eBay. That set of four that I showed you. I got them, I think, for a freaking steal. I don't, I guess they're not that very expensive, maybe not that sought after. So, again, to unbox or not to unbox, that is the question because they are really pretty figures. And if, if, if it were, if they had the other three to go with them, I would. They're just really nice. I think I'm going to vote to unbox them because A, I think they would look nice together. B, I think they would look cool on your shelf with the other D and D figures that you have. Yes, yeah. But these are not getting unboxed. Yeah. But how do I display them? Unless I punch the hole. You can't punch the hole. Now I gotta edit this out. Um, you could, instead of just putting a push pin through that, um, like put. The push pins in and just like sit it on there. Yeah. Have it have it more as like support than Yeah. Going through. And I've done that before. But man, they're great. And they're they're real pretty. Yeah. Um but um critical role. But wow, Cohan. Much. Yeah. <laughs> We need to somehow hashtag on them or this on for them, and maybe they'll they'll watch it, and maybe because I love them, I I I I would love to just sit in a room and watch them play. God, I'd love to play with them, and I I'd bring out Herschel the Large because that would just add to their chaos. One Herschel T Large, but I would just love to see, I would just love to meet them and sit and talk with them and just just hang out with them because they just seem like good fun people. They're just a bunch of. I don't. I don't think I've. I've seen you fam girl like this over something before. Well, but but like like li like literally like when they talk about their sponsors and stuff, they were talking about in the last episode. Like that was either sponsor before they start the game and Matt Mercer and I can't. And you mind you, the episode I just watched was from four years ago. Uh, the Mighty Nine started six years ago, so I've watched two years worth of their campaign already. Yikes. Um, something along those lines. Anyway, but they talked about that at the time. There's a one of their backers is Rook and oh god, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, um, basically, uh, um, 
the guy from uh, Scream played Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Um, yeah. Matthew yeah, Lillard. Matt, um, Matt, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Matthew Lillard. Thank you. He and some other guy had have this other company that they run. And they back, and at, at the, apparently at that time they were supplying schools with DM books and monster manuals and dice for so people who were doing gamers clubs. And Matthew which Mercer, you've done. Like, what's that? Which you've done. I wish I have done. Um, but Matthew Mercer was like, um, he was so excited because he's like, you know, when we were growing up and we were kids, this was not acceptable, right? This is not a big thing. You, you were a freak if you played this or it was witchcraft or it was bad, right? Yeah, or you I, were I, I was just telling uh, the other day, I was not allowed to play D and D when I was a kid because I would have ended up uh, worshiping Satan. Right, and then he said basically says those same things, and even even now in twenty twenty four, right? It's it's huge, it's a huge thing. It's no longer considered geeky or nerdy. Kids talk about it. I've I've listened to to quote unquote jocks in my class talk about their campaigns they've done with these kids you wouldn't think would normally be friends. They get together and they play D and D and they love it. And it's like, welcome to the man. It's like it's like doing this. It's like it's like buying these toys, right? We all have our things, and you and I have met, made many and played in many campaigns. D and D, vampire. Um. Um. No, that GI Joe was my other group. But we we've just we've played how many? We've never finished a D and D campaign except one. That was Tom's. I think that's the only one we ever finished. Um. We've never finished a vampire campaign. We didn't. No, we finished yours. No, we didn't. Yes, oh, we did. We we finished one of my, not the original one, but we did finish one of them. Yeah. yeah. We, we, all right. We finished the one that I tried to turn into a podcast because back in the day when I was uh, really into the idea of doing like, live play because of things like critical role um we 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 finished that campaign and now it, it i'm i'm so tickled that you are uh god because that was yeah like six years ago or so um so it, it i'm i'm so i don't want to say amused because that that makes it it sound like a like it's belittling but I, i'm enjoying how much you're enjoying uh actually finding this stuff now um because like i've been listening to like the adventure zone for i i'm not that good at math um for a very long time now and have, have gotten into other stuff since then and that's why i tried to get us it uh because we we are very uh, uh when when we play D D A, we're pretty good at it um the the group of guys we would play with all had theater backgrounds as well not Tom. Um, and not with us, but on his own he did when he was younger. Okay. Believe that's how he and Roger met. Huh. Um, or at least like stuff they did as a kid. Um, but we have great rapport and great humor and could make a good uh, show out, out of it if we wanted to. Um, so that's where all that stuff came from. So it's so neat to see you, like, now just Obsessed. dive in. It's it's a little wild because it's like you 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 do sound like you went on two dates and you're trying to move in with each other. Yeah. Huh? Um, but it is it is very cool to see you having so much fun with something. It's so good, and and I was af- I, I truly was afraid that. Like when I went and looked at these figures, like knowing that that campaign is over and they've started a new one, I was afraid they were going to disappear. And I, and I was like, okay, I'm going to get these. At least the, there's, like I said, there's three, one is a spoiler and I know it's going to happen. Um, but two others, I don't know who they are. I haven't met them yet. At least I don't recall meeting them. Um, but I, I needed the, I needed the, the, the original squad. Uh, so to, to adorn my, 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 my place. And then again, these, these are, they are, and I think you're right. I think I'm going to unbox these 
again, for what I paid for them, obviously they're not, not that I would buy them for value, but even their, even the back, you know, they have their, their, their story. And then a picture of, you know, they made the four, but I want, I really want Grog, Scanlan and, and Pike. They made the big yeah. four up here, the, you know, the, the, these three and, 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 and Percy, who the story kind of revolves around these three are more the comic relief, but that's who I want. I want those three who are the comic relief. Well, Grog and Scanlan anyway, but anyway, so those are my toys. That's my, that's my huge haul. Um, probably a lot unexpected. Yeah, it really was. Cause you've been telling me for some time that you had a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I expected it to, and you, you did have GI Joe's and you had wrestlers in there. Um, but it, I've, I've been baffled trying to think of how you filled up that much space. Cause I'm like, there's, I know they put out a lot of classifieds, but there can't be that many that a, he would want and not already have. So what the heck else was he picking up? And I would, I would have never, would have never guessed. Yeah. Even though I don't know the last three, four times we've talked on the phone, I keep talking about critical role. Like it's going out of style. Yeah. But yeah. And I, and I knew that they'd made, like they've, I, I know that they've made figures. I didn't know about the the reaction ones. I've, this is the first I've seen those, yeah. but I know they've made figures from like the animated series. It's, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would not have would not have gotten there. You would you would have never gotten me on, on Jay and Silent Bob either. Those are the ones. Yeah. I I, oh, I knew I knew those two. <laughs> yeah, you probably could have guessed maybe a Michael Knight and even the aliens, but I knew well, I that. Yeah, stuff that I I wouldn't know. Like I don't know if there's Michael Knight figures floating around out there. Like, and I totally would have, like, given time and maybe some hints, I probably would have gotten to Hachiman. But the the piece of resistance is that the four before that. Well, the two well, you, that will become four, Captain Commando. So you, you 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 would not have. Uh, you don't think you would have gotten around to guessing uh, that I got a Captain Commando figure? <laughs> Those are brilliant. We had some great stuff. Some great oh, stuff. Stupid old Capcom games. Hey. Yeah, you did you, for for such a, a big haul. That was real cool. Like what a good cuz we could have sat here and went through like 12 old vehicles and like you know, eight classifieds and but no, oh. that was that was a real fun mix. Good job, Cohen. Yeah, good job to you too, sir. Good stuff. Good, good job, toys. Good job, toys. Toys have done as well again. It's and a good again, hobby. I, I mean, you could go back and do the math if you want, but like what I said, the most I paid for a figure was that Snake Eyes from Timber. Like I said, I think I had him for forty dollars, and he's normally forty-five. I think that's what I got for forty or thirty-five, somewhere in that area. I got him at a discount. And next to the Persuader, he was 35 Everything else was $28 or less. <laughs> and most of it floating between 10 and 15 bucks. That's why it became such a huge haul. I know that sounds you're like, that's still a lot of money, but I got quality and quantity. And variety. And variety. And I'm so happy. Remember we talked about having that $20 bill or not? I'd rather have this guy. <laughs> and I'd, and I'd, I'd rather have Hachi Man. Yeah. Um, we bought a lot of cool toys. We bought a lot of cool toys. And the, the best part is there's still a lot of cool ones out there. There are. So the saga continues. Much like Seasons of Critical Role uh, goes on and on for a very long time. And Cohan loves it. I do. Um, so this was I Bought Toys Today. Um, and I was John. And I was Cohan? Still am. Uh, and we bought toys today. We bought a lot of toys. Who knows what we'll do tomorrow. See you soon.
don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Okay, we got to start doing that earlier in the episode, don't we? Ah, well, whatever. Good night, everybody. Thank you.